What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeDB.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to copy and paste label text with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at copying and pasting label text. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, a viewer asked this question a couple of days ago, and it's a really good question. How do you copy and paste label text? So normally, you can't copy label text. You can't highlight it. Right, so here we have label one. I've, I'm gonna like click my mouse button. You can't tell, but just trust me. I'm gonna click my mouse button and I'm gonna try and highlight this text. And you can see nothing happens. Right, this is what regular labels do in Kinter. You can't sort of highlight them. So if somebody wants to copy the text to the clipboard or whatever, you can't do it. Now down here we've got this other one, and you can see, boom! I can copy it. I can hit Control C on my keyboard to copy. That's the universal copy on Windows, Command C if you're on a Mac, I believe. I can come down here and Control V or Command V if you're on a Mac and I can paste it in. So I, how come I can copy and paste this one, but I can't this one? That's what we're going to look at in this video. So it is Friday morning here in Vegas. Very excited about the weekend. Going to do some hiking. Weather is going to be amazing. Uh, what are you guys up to this weekend? Shoot me a comment in the comment section below and hope you're looking forward to the weekend. I've got basic starter code that we always have. I've got a file called copy underscore label dot pi using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So right off the bat, let me just make a little confession here. I said I'm going to show you how to copy labels with Kinter. So like if we went my underscore label and set that equal to a label and we put that in root and we said the text equals label one. And then we went down here in my underscore label dot pack and gave this a pad y of like 20 to push it down the screen. This is what I'm talking about by a label, right? And we could even come up here and go font equals Helvetica and like 20, make it really big, right? So this is what we usually have for a label. And you just can't copy and paste this stuff. You can't highlight it. That's just how Kinter works. And nothing in this video that I'm about to show you is going to change that. What I've come up with is a hack, a solution that we can get around this. And we could do it by using an entry box, right? So let's just try this. So let's go my underscore entry. And we've done lots of work with lots of entry boxes. So in the past, we would call this an entry and we would put it in root. And then we would my underscore entry dot pack and give this a pad y equals 20. So let's just save this. Let me comment this, uh, create entry box. Let's comment this, create label. So now let's just run this and see what we have here. So copy underscore label dot pi, head over to our sublime text editor and copy underscore label dot pi. And you see, we've got this label and we've got this entry box and we can type stuff into the entry box, right? So, okay. So what? Well, we can hack this entry box to put some text in it already. And then we can change this, the color of this entry box to the same color as the background of our app, or just make it invisible and not give it any border at all. And then it will look like a label. And entry boxes, if you notice, I can type some stuff. I can highlight this. I can copy this. I can delete it. I can paste it back in. We could do all the things. We, we just need to make this look like a label. And if we do it right, no one will ever know the difference. So that's what we're going to do. So let's head back over here. And the first thing we're going to do is, well, let's make this bigger. Let's just go font equals Helvetica and make this size 20 just to make the box itself bigger because we want this big label text anyway, right? So, okay, so now it's bigger. And let's just save this and run it just so you understand what I just did there. All right? So now, now it's real big, right? Okay. So now let's make this sort of invisible. Well, right off the bat, we can give it a border of zero. So I'm going to put these on separate lines so that we can at least see what's going on a little better. So let's go BD equals zero. Let's save this and run it just to see what that did. So we can run this again. 
And you can see now it's still white, but there's no like hard border around it, right? So, okay, we're getting there. Now we can give this a state of something. And the state I want to give it is read only. Now, read only allows us to not change whatever's in there, right? And it also changes, it also kind of grays it out to the same color as the background of your app. So if we save this and run it, you notice it looks like it's disappeared. It's still there, but it's just the same color and we can't tell. All right, we're getting closer. So now we need to put text in there. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can use a string, var a string variable or you can insert it the normal way you insert things. So let's do both. So we'll start with string variable. So let's go create string var. And I'm gonna just call this uh, my text, right? Whatever. And we're gonna set this equal to a string var. And remember string vars are special variables in Kinter that you can get and set like a widget. So we can set this thing. We can call my underscore text dot set. And we could set this to whatever this is label to, right? So now we can add this my text string var to our entry box. So we can do that using a text variable. So we go text variable and we can set that equal to my underscore text, All right? So that will do it. That will work, I think. So let's run this. And you see here we have this is label two. We can highlight it. I can right click and copy. And uh, let's see if we come back to our text editor. I can right click and paste. This is label two. And that works. So that's the first way to do it. Right? You could also instead of using string vars, if you want, we can let's actually let's comment this out. And take this out. And let me uh, make a little comment here of that just so you can remember it. So instead of this, let's take this out, we could insert into our entry box like we've done before. So we can let's go let's put it under here, insert into entry box. And we do that by calling my underscore entry dot insert. We want to put this in position zero. Just the first position and we want inside of here. This is cool label two, right now. Normally this would work, except up here we set this as read only. So it's already been set set at read only so we can't change it. So if we try to run this, nothing's going to happen. So let's try that break out of here, run it again and it doesn't show up, right? So what we have to do in this case is take this read only off. All right, so we can do that. Now if we save this, it's not going to be the right color. See if we run this again, the text is in there and we can highlight it, but the thing is white. So what we can do is, now this is a little convoluted, but we can come down here after we put the text in, then we can my underscore entry dot config this guy and then set our read only state there. So here it's a regular entry box. We can insert stuff and then afterwards we can set it to read only, which will change the color. All right, so we can save this and we can run it. And this time it works. You'll notice these two, this label and this entry box aren't lined up. That's because this entry box, as you probably noticed when we had the state different, it stretches longer. So when it centers it, it centers it over. So just keep that in mind. You might use a different grid system or you might use a different positioning system like grid or place or whatever to make up for that. You could change probably the, can you change the width of a entry box? I believe you can. Uh, so how many characters is this? This would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we could probably set the width of our entry box, we can go with equal 20, save this, run it. Well, that didn't really seem to have helped a whole lot. <laughs> if we set it to with equal 10, there we go, 10 maybe. All right, that, that did it a little bit, but now the thing isn't quite big enough. So you could fiddle around with it with your specific text 
right? So if we went, I don't know, split the difference, try 15. And it's a little better, it looks more evened out now. So, uh, you know, you could play around with that to, to change position or whatever you like, use the grid system or the play system or whatever. So that is my Friday kind of hacky way to get around a weird thing in Kinter. I don't know why labels aren't highlightable, why we can't copy this. I mean, it's silly, it's a label. You should be able to highlight it and copy it. But this is a pretty easy way to get around it and you know, it works perfectly well. So uh, that's cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.